Capital Center in Landover, Maryland, the ACC semifinals, North Carolina Tar Heels and the Virginia Cavaliers. And welcome to the side of this year's ACC tournament, the Cap Center, where Virginia has an outstanding record, almost a home court advantage, if you will. Up by 95, they are 8-1 and one in this building. And in 1976, they won the ACC Tournament Championship here. Well, I don't believe that affects the players that are right there. So I'm disagreeing right. with you right off the start about the great home court advantage. I say the advantage has got to be North Carolina with all their size and their perimeter game. The starting lineups now from public address announcer Mark Brooks. The 1987 ACC Tournament. Here are the starting lineups. First, the forwards for Virginia. Number 42, 6'7", senior from Kingston, Jamaica, Andrew Kennedy. At forward for North Carolina, number 24, 6'11", senior from Kohler, Wisconsin, Joe Wolf. At the other forward for Virginia, number 21, a 6'5", junior from Long Island, New York, Mel Kennedy. At forward for North Carolina, number 35, 6'10", senior from Ashley, Pennsylvania, Dave Popson. At center for Virginia, number 22, 6'9", senior from Rochester, New York, Tom Sheehy. At center for North Carolina, number 34, 6'9", freshman from Virginia Beach, J.R. Reed. the guards for Virginia number 11 6 3 sophomore from Salem Virginia Richard Morgan for North Carolina number 14 6 3 sophomore from Carlisle Pennsylvania Jeff Lebo at the other guard for Virginia number 10 six foot junior from Brooklyn New York John Johnson for North Carolina, number 30, 6'3", senior from Queens, New York, Kenny Smith. The head coach of the Virginia is Terry Holland. And the head coach of North Carolina, Dean Smith. Both have experienced a great deal of success in ACC tournament play. Now, Dick, as always, it's time for your keys to victory. Tim, when you talk about the keys today, for Virginia to win, they have to stop Carolina's transition game. Carolina likes to utilize the full court with their pressure defense and then run off the turnover. And they got to handle the pressure defenses of Carolina. They can't allow Carolina to get a lot of turnovers and be able to push the ball up the floor. So that's very vital for Virginia as far as Carolina's goes, Carolina's got to create an up-tempo game. Virginia wants to play the half-court game. Carolina wants to go up and down the floor like the Indianapolis Raceway, and they have to take advantage of their great size inside. They have to pound the ball into J.R. Reed and Wolf because they have tremendous size versus a small lineup for Virginia. Many experts believe that if there's one team in this league that could possibly beat North Carolina this year, it is Virginia largely because of the Johnny Johnson factor against Kenny Smith. Johnny Johnson does a great job of neutralizing the pressure defenses as we look at the matchups right here. I don't believe those are going to be the specific matchups. I've been told that Mel Kennedy may play J.R. Reed. Kennedy, an outstanding defender, but he'll be given away like five inches to the big Clydesdale, the freshman of the year in the nation. And I'll tell you this, he'll be given away, Tim, a lot of pounds. Carolina has the advantage in tournament play. It's a colorful semifinal with the orange and blue of the Cavaliers and blue heaven blue from Carolina. The tap controlled by Virginia and Richard Morgan looks for Sheehy and Dave Popson knocks it away. Richard Morgan has a tendency to try to make the spectacular play, always looking for exciting excitement. He's got to learn to play under control before he becomes a solid collegiate. Drew Kennedy. Right what? away, the star from yesterday, he hit the two free throws that sent Virginia into the semifinal, a one-point victory against Georgia Tech, and a turnover, and here come the Cavaliers with J.J. running the show in the backcourt. Andrew Kennedy's had a tremendous year, averaging 16 points a game, leading them in rebounds, a junior college product out of Amarillo Junior College. Mel Kennedy off the front iron, Dave Popson controls it. 
Hobson, one of the most improved players in America, had his career high yesterday, 23 versus Maryland. They really needed those points early in the game. JR. And there's Kennedy with position against Popson. And it's lost out of bounds. Last touch by Popson. He knocked it away. And Virginia will have it. Hobson and Sheehy were in this game, Tim, came out of high school with all kinds of laurels. They made almost everyone's high school All-American team and put a lot of pressure on both guys. They've been good collegians, but certainly not All-American. Sheehy's had to make some, make some adjustments as well, moving inside and outside, whether Holland would go with a quick or bulky lineup. J.R. Reed's matching up on Sheehy. Joe Forte, Dick Paparo, Paul Hausman, our official. Sheehy open on the wing. And there is Morgan to tip it through. Richard Morgan's got the great legs. He's a tremendous leaper. Good offensive rebound. Interesting matchup between Smith and Johnny Johnson. They're both from New York City, from the Big Apple. They both have great reputations coming out of the scholastic ranks. There's the jumper right here. Now we watch the offensive tip in. He's got inside position. Excellent tip in right there. Mel Kennedy picked up the foul on the baseline area. North Carolina controls underneath their own hoop. Tough seeing those numbers on a Virginia uniform. I don't like those numbers, Tim. Oh, but they're colorful. They're colorful. They really are. I like the color scheme, but they're tough to read. I'm blind anyway. <laughs> That's right. The fluorescent look. Joe Wolf bodies up over Sheehy. Right there again with position, Andrew Kennedy. Smaller, not as big, but playing good position basketball on the defensive boards, and there he is offensively. Virginia playing with a lot of confidence. Every possession, all their players with a lot of intensity. Kenny Smith. North Carolina cold the first two minutes, 0 for 5 from the floor at the outset. Notice how Johnny Johnson backs it out. Looks first, number one, sees if the transition is there. It's not there, brings it out. Now to go to a tempo game. Mel Kennedy drives over Popson and picks up the charge. Dick Paparo there to make the call. That's the second foul on Mel Kennedy. And Terry Holland will have to go to his bench to get some help. There's Mel Kennedy taking the ball strong to the goal. Joe Wolf demonstrates some of his versatility, comes over defensively and takes the charge. North Carolina, Indiana, and Notre Dame do as good as a job as anyone in America in rotating over and taking the charge. Holland did. Talking with Kennedy, obviously distraught over the early foul difficulty, and Bill Batts is coming to the game, the freshman from South Euclid, Ohio, who has really performed very well down the stretch for the 21-8 Cavaliers. He gives them a unique athlete. He gives them a player. Look at it, go right to the horse inside. Can't stop him down in the lane. He's big. He's strong. He's tough. He has lived up to every billing coming into the high school, out of the high school ranks to the collegiate level. That's the first field goal of the game for the Tar Heels. Two and a half minutes of the game without a field goal. Here's the turnover. Lebo to Solo. Jeff Lebo from Carlisle High School. His daddy can't be here today. His dad, Dave Lebo, is coaching in a state tournament game. He coaches Carlisle. But we saw the lovely yeah. mom, and you saw it. You heard what she said, Tim. She loves you. She really does. <laughs> That's off the glass. And it's 6-4, Virginia. Fast pace right now. Carolina running it up, and Virginia's playing at a faster pace than I anticipated. Good positioning for Sheehy as he knocked it away to Johnson. Look at Virginia trying to beat Carolina at their own game. Off the glass, Lebo to Popson. He's wide open. Oh, yes, and oh, what a foul. silly foul. What a silly foul. Richard Morgan picked it up, and now North Carolina could take the lead. There goes Dave Popson from rags to riches, one of the most improved players in America from Bishop O'Reilly in Ashley, Pennsylvania. You don't want to foul in that situation, Tim. Morgan, I think, felt he had the speed to catch Popson, but Dave has uh, gotten stronger. He's also picked up some quickness in the last year. If you're going to foul in that situation, make sure he doesn't go to the get the deuce, right. that he has to go to the foul line and earn the two, but you're not going to foul him when he's got a clear layup. Got a lucky break, came off with a miss. That's a rare miss for Popson. He shoots at an 85% clip from the line. Terry Holland's done a great job again. He's been such a solid performer on the sideline for Virginia. There's a near steal. Johnson gets it back. Nice dish. See, so heading now, he would have forced the action his freshman and sophomore year. 
Now he's playing under control, making good decisions. She, you're right, the Brooklyn kid from Blacktop Basketball has really become a controlled player, maybe the most improved backcourt player in the country right now. He might be one of the most underrated point guards in the nation. There he is, make us look good, JJ. Eight to six, the Cavaliers. North Carolina still looking for its first lead. Joe Wolf from outside. That's the trail man in their fast break. They run a sideline break, and then they have a secondary phase where they're always looking to hit a trail man. Last year, Brad Darty would score a bundle off the trail position. You mentioned the pace of the game. Interestingly, North Carolina has yet to go to the bench. You know Dean Smith will use all in his arsenal oh, nice early. Play. And there's Bats and another beautiful feed inside the paint. Bill Bats gives him a unique athlete, something they don't possess, Tim. He gives him a run and jump athlete, someone that's got athletic skill. He can run up and down the floor, played at St. Joseph's High School in Ohio, where they produce the guy by the name of Clark Kellogg. Special K, they call him at Ohio State. Another steal. Virginia looking for a big lead now early on. Johnson. Johnson with a great job gaining control of the loose ball. It takes it to the goal and gets the deuce. A half dozen right now for UVA means a great deal. Their coaching staff felt they had to come out quickly, play themselves into this game. And there's a foul against Sheehy, bodying up on Joe Wall. We watch him dump the ball down inside. There's J.R. Reed losing the ball. Now here's the conversion on the other end. Now look, he's in the game control. He says, hold, hold it. And then he makes that good move along the baseline for the layup. Now on the other end, Wolf will go to the line. You know, we know about Michelangelo and what I think of Dean Smith. He's certainly a Hall of Famer. And when you look at a total coach in every phase of the game, I've often said they should redefine coach in Webster's Dictionary and should say coach equals Dean Smith. But what about Terry Holland? The pre-Sampson era, he was successful. The Sampson era and the post-Sampson era going to the Final Four in 1984. Terry Holland can flat out coach. That team was 17 and 11 coming out of the ACC tournament. Many question whether they should have even gotten an invitation that year. One of the few coaches to go to the Final Four twice in the decade of the 80s. Right now, his club leads by four. Tim Brando and Dick Vitale back at the Cap Center and Landover, Maryland, the ACC Tournament semifinals. Some say perhaps the championship game being played right now. Virginia and North Carolina, of course, fans of North Carolina State and Wake Forest would beg to differ. There will be our second semifinal coming up a bit later this afternoon. Tim, what really could be the difference here this afternoon is the three-point shot. Virginia doesn't use it basically at all. I mean, all season long, they're 38 for 123. North Carolina, very effective shooting the three-point shot. And Carolina's shooting ability from long range could be the difference. Andrew Kennedy rejected by Scott Williams. Just in off the bench, Steve Bucknall also in the game for the Tar Heels. Now the Tar Heels using their pitch now, and Ranzino Smith also in. So wholesale substitutions, and Joe Wolf connects inside the lane. I like Joe Wolf, a very flexible player. I agree with Dean Smith, going to be a solid NBA prospect. He can pass the ball, he defends people, he's a good shooter, and he's very, very vital to this team. Doesn't get half the ink he deserves. Johnson, the iron unkind, and it's pulled down by Williams. Pace of this game certainly favorable to the Tar Heels, though Virginia holding their own right now underneath. Wolf again. There's Joe Wolf. They need two big baskets. Comes down and gives it an inside play and then a baseline jump shot. Out of Wisconsin, Marquette running them badly. Virginia needed a good start. They got it. They were up by a half dozen, and now Carolina on a 6-0 run. Virginia's a good basketball team. This is no fluke team. They're coming in with six straight wins. Played Carolina to the buzzer. Bats again, and he and Drew Kennedy kept it alive, playing volleyball with it. That is impressive, considering who's down low for the Tar Heels. Bill Bats is a jumper. He's had a real good run in his last 10 games, and he's getting better and better every minute on the floor. Foul away from the ball. Three-second violation rather than a foul away from the ball. A rare three-second call. You don't see that often. And there is Mel Kennedy, who's taking a seat with a couple of personal fouls. He will now re-enter the game. 
Mel Kennedy's from out of Power Memorial in New York, the same high school that produced Lou Alcindor. Also, Lenny Elmore, who did a great job when he played at Maryland, came from that high school, as well as a guy by the name of Edward Searcy and an excellent coach by the name of Brendan Malone, who's now the assistant coach of the New York Knickerbockers. But that high school closed its doors in his, after his last year. Here you see their last meeting in ACC tournament play, 82 that year. And yes, that was the year that the Tar Heels were dancing on Bourbon Street with the national championship beating Georgetown by a single point. Virginia does a great job out of their half-court game. It was an excellent backdoor cut. A deflection stopped the layup. Sheehy baseline. Bishop McQuaid High School had all the laurels coming out of high school. Tom Sheehy. He's had an up-and-down career, but I'll tell you one thing. He's physical, and he can be mean on the interior. Hobson is back in. Curtis Hunter in the game now. Everyone has been in the game now for Dean Smith. Kenny Smith back in the game running the show at the point. They lay a lot of screens out of their passing game. Very difficult to defend the way they move the ball. They get excellent player movement and ball movement. J.R. Reed is open. Mel Kennedy fouled by Curtis Hunter. Curtis Hunter gives him an athlete when he comes on the floor at the three position. Something they've been lacking in the last two years, the ability to go out and pressure people because they were not really a quick team. And anybody that says this team is better than 1982. James Worthy, Sam Perkins, and all world, Michael Jordan. They can line up with you, Timmy, and I. We can't play a lick, and those three can beat the five that are on the floor. But I'm not taking anything away. They're still my choice, the club here, to win the national championship. Morgan! For three, and now Virginia on a 7-0 run, and they lead by that many. Richard Morgan, an exciting player. Curtis Hunter, and the tip by oh, Thompson. They want interference inside oh. the cylinder. They've not waved it off. I think they got a lucky break right there. I think the officials let one go. I think there was definitely inter interference up there above the cylinder. Internationally, that would definitely count. You're allowed to play with the ball up on the rim. Johnny Johnson up against Ranzino Smith. The Cavaliers take the break when they have it. Right now, their half-court offense working well. J.R. Reed with the rebound, hammering inside with Bill Batts. Lebo is coming to the game now for the Tar Heels. Awfully difficult to keep up with the lineup changes. If you're in a man-to-man, -man, finding out what number you on has got to be difficult if you're the oppos uh, opposition against the Tar Heels. They missed JR. They had him posted down in the boxes. They're playing now with two second guards, really, and Lebo and Ranzino Smith. Hunter lost it. Just uh, slipped out of his grasp inside the paint. Injuries really have hurt Curtis Hunter in his career. Now watch this right here. There's the jump shot, Curtis Hunter. Now let's see if the ball is above the cylinder. Oh. It's close. Yeah. David Popson with the great legs. He got labeled to be the next Bobby Jones, and that was tough to live up to when he came into the collegiate ranks. Virginia leads it by five. Our championship week continues here on ESPN. Next, our live coverage of the ACC semifinals continues. Wake Forest, the Demon Deacons, what a great comeback story last night. Coming back from 17 down to beat second-seeded Clemson, they'll take on Jimmy Valvano's tournament-ready NC State Wolfpack. Jimmy Valvano and Dale Brown are proving again that they're great tournament coaches. Dale Brown doing it in the SEC where he's messed up that entire situation <laughs> for the NCAA selection committee. And Jimmy Valvano, if he gets a win here today, could definitely lock up another berth in the NCAA for the Wolfpack. Well, with the surprise stories we've already seen unfolding here on Championship Week, it's hard to believe that you could ever say that there's a title game in the semifinals. You see the field goal shooting right now. Both teams playing an up-tempo, launching many shots. And right now, Johnny Johnson and Morgan both feel it from the outside. That one rolling off the iron, and the Tar Heels trying to crawl back to within three. Both, both teams use the horizontal screens, the vertical screens, and make it very difficult to defend them. Branzino Smith pumps. And Kennedy brings it down for Virginia. The two Kennedys, no relation. Andrew and Mel Kennedy have been very active on the glass. Well, Johnson just negotiates to find Sheehy. And the long rebound out to Lebo. Lebo doesn't have good foot speed, but he's an excellent passer, very heady player, and an excellent stationary shooter. 
Reed with the turnaround. That's become almost a patented maneuver by him along the baseline in his freshman year. Virginia defensively has done an excellent job in defensive transition to shut off the number game and not allow Carolina to get three on twos, four on ones. Johnny Johnson, you can tell with Ranzino Smith guarding him, he believes he's got that extra step that he doesn't have against Smith. Morgan throws up an air ball. Kennedy, Mel Kennedy follows. He's one of those guys with the great instincts, always in the right place. Was an excellent sixth man when he came here on the collegiate ranks. You see, I noticed he looked for the three-point line. Really changed the face of college basketball. Wolf has it stolen by Sheehy. Morgan brings it back out to Johnson, and he'll take the pitch and put it through. He's second leading scorer, very emotional player. He's playing a lot on emotion, came out of Salem High School. He was a parade high school All-American. He's got the great legs on a breakaway. He can really go up above that rim. Mala, North Carolina. Right. Ranzino Smith down low, committing the foul away from the ball. And now Virginia looking for a double-digit lead, and the Dean from Carolina is uh, running into a a real freight train from I-95. Virginia, their fans in a building very close to home and in a building where they're very comfortable, now in a position to take a 10-point lead. Paul Hausman explaining something to J.R. Reed with that special haircut. Paul Hausman, Dickie Paparo, and Joe Forte here today are three of the better officials in all of basketball. Freddie Barrichette, who does a great job as the supervisor of officials in the ACC, is mighty proud of this crew. Flagrant foul call against Ranzino Smith, and you saw Sheehy taking a seat. Johnson gets the two at the line, and Virginia now looking for an 11-point lead with 8.43 left in the opening half. North Carolina's been unable to establish a power game inside. Virginia's doing a good job in post-defense. Tom Sheehy's an excellent defender on the inside, makes up for any lack of lateral quickness or foot speed by playing good post position, and so do the Kennedys. They got a quick team on the floor now. They're playing without Sheehy. Scott Williams and J.R. Reed. Cutters down low. Neither can handle the rock once the entry pass is made. We've seen many turnovers down in that paint area. Virginia came out with a lot of intensity. I really believe early in this game, they've been much more intense and emotional than North Carolina. And that was one of the intangibles that you had to believe was on Virginia's side coming in. After all, they played Carolina to an oh, overtime Dean Smith period. is furious. He wanted an offensive foul. They went to their run and jump defense, went to a trap. It looked like they had the offensive foul, but no whistle. Anytime you play a team as well as Virginia did and lose, you have confidence in the third meeting. Here's Smith feeding Reed, and he's fouled. They got bats down low. You notice the excellent speed and quickness. He's electricity on a break, Kenny Smith. I think Kenny Smith's going to make out to become an excellent point guard in the NBA. There's the denial defensively by J.R. Reed. Now he's going to kick it off to the middle and cut without it. There's Kenny Smith with the no-look pass. He gets bumped on a move to the goal. He's one of my all-wide bodies. Look at the body on this guy in terms of J.R. Reed. Not this guy sitting right there. Came out of Virginia Beach. They got another product down there in that area by the name of Alonzo Mourning. Everyone says he's going to be an instant dominator. He's only a junior in high school. He's from the state of Virginia. Already in this game, Carolina, seven turnovers, most of them inside in the first 12 minutes of play. Not a characteristic that's true to Dean Smith type club. If J.R. Reed decided to stay home and go to his own state university, Virginia, switch him and put him on his Virginia team, this Virginia team would be in a top five in the nation. Well, imagine if they still had Olden Polonies, who could have been on this club easily. Yeah, we can keep doing that with a lot of teams. Can you imagine <laughs> yep. North Carolina State if they had Chris Washburn and Memphis State, William Bedford and Syracuse Pearl Washington. And we can go on yep. and on, but that really changed the complexion of college basketball early this year. Mel Kennedy looking low. Johnny Johnson is the, the one they want to have the rock. He's got it right now. Nice move inside. Oh, Down really, low. Boy, they're pick. really doing a good job, the Kennedys, and Mel Kennedy puts it through this time. An excellent offensive rebounder, but what a tremendous job of using the head fake to get free for that baseline offensive rebound. The Rock, you're stealing my turns now. <laughs> I've been working with you too long. It's late in the year. <laughs> Out of bounds, last touch by Reed. Garrett Sims has entered the game for Virginia. 
Now we watch the little jump. Here comes the offensive rebound. Now watch the head fake. Once. He gets him up in the air. Oh, they left something on the floor. What a tremendous <laughs> job with that head fake. Virginia, the Wahoos are singing their tune with an 11 point lead. Late in the first half, the Tar Heels cut into the Virginia lead. Now it's early in the second half, and Virginia leads North Carolina 47 44, right here on ESPN Classic. ESPN will conclude its weekend of World Cup skiing tomorrow with live coverage of the Super Giant Slalom airtime, 12.30 Eastern, 9.30 Pacific time. We're concerned about the backcourt, Dick. Lebo had seven points, four from the floor, three at the line, and now Kenny Smith, two of six in this game. So they have done a great job defending against the Carolina backcourt. Mel Kennedy comes through, and it's 49-44, Virginia. J.R. Reed and the foul on Andrew Kennedy. J.R. Reed with the power move. Hobson looks like he turned his ankle. The one thing about Carolina late, they've been a healthy club as opposed to the past few years. There's the crossover step. There's the power layup. Might have pushed off with that left arm. It's hard to believe anybody was able to stop this kid in high school, number 34, J.R. Reed. He's so big, strong, and powerful, and knows his limitations. His shot selection is excellent. Hobson going to the sideline. The trainer going to look at his ankle. 23 points in the game yesterday for Dave Hobson. Certainly the player that they did not expect to get as much from offensively going into this year was Hobson. Terry Holland now recognizes he must get it done with the likes of Dave Hobson doing well. And that's been the case for everyone in the ACC this year. Well, Hobson made my all most improved team along with Gary Grant, Kevin Johnson of Luke Campanelli's California team, and Jerome Lane, the Windex man, and a comeback player of the year, Dallas Comagees from out of the ball. Another forced shot by Mel Kennedy, but there's Andrew Kennedy again. He lost it this time, though, to Scott Williams. Kenny Smith of control and the charge. Tom Sheehy there to collect it on the gym. Not a heady play by Kenny Smith. Here he is flying out of control with a change of direction. He takes it up. He's looking to dish. He's looking to find someone. And there he is just running rampant. Oh, this is a bad shot right here. He forces this shot. And the ball's going to come off to Carolina. He's going to pop it out of the hands of Kennedy. Scott Williams. 6'10 cross from out of California. He said, go east, young man. He violated Horace Greeley's old report. <laughs> See, I know my history, too. That's right. East and west. Right now, it's all in the eastern. Oh, look at that contact. Sheehy and Wolf are all over one another. What a move inside the seam by Tom Sheehy. Hey, Sheehy's playing like a man possessed. He wants the W against the Tar Heels. He wants him to celebrate down in... Hey, I'll tell you, down in Charlottesville, I can't get over the contact inside. I, looks like a Big Ten game now in that baseline. They're really letting them play, too. Williams baseline. Sheehy with the rebound and the outlet to Morgan. And here goes a two-on-one. Johnson solo. Johnny Johnson, J.J., a little act from down in New York City. He's a PTPer. That's right, Johnny Johnson, a primetime performer this year for Terry Holland. They love it in Cavalier land. Back to an eight-point lead, the largest lead in quite a while for the Wahoos. What's impressive is Carolina made a run, but Virginia just keeps banging back at him and says, hey, we're for real. A read with a little Marcus Haynes act that time, controlling the dribble while slipping. Oh, they're really banging inside now. Sheehy and JR really bodying up. Smith is cornered, finds Wolf. And again, Kennedy, that time Andrew Kennedy tipped it through. Look at that bench. Carolina's bench is animated. They know they're in for a war. This is going down to the buzzer, baby. This is nail-biting time. Get out the mailbox. They, cre <laughs> they credited that bucket to Scott Williams, but it was really Andrew Kennedy that knocked it through. And now a Virginia turnover. 
They might need a timeout to really settle down. It'll be a TV timeout shortly. That's what they got to go right down to the Clydesdale the horse. Maybe an offensive foul. And yes, Keith sir. Smith is down on the hardwood. He hit the floor that time, and he's all over Paul Hausman and Dick Paparo. That was an excellent call. Now you watch it right down here. Now we watch him steal. There's the steal, the denial. And now we're going to watch the entry. Now watch him wheel towards him. He's going to take it right at Sheehy. And he definitely bangs him in his shoulder as he spins into the lane. They're trying to clean up post play. That was one of the points of emphasis this year, according to the manual put out. 53-47, Virginia. We got a good one. This really is my kind of basketball. I get excited at games like this, Tim. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't noticed this yet. Kennedy again. Look at them go for the loose ball. Oh, what a pass. Andrew Kennedy. What a pass. Tom Sheehy again makes the play. He's making every play. He's hobbling. Sheehy is hobbling. May be a bit fatigued, and yes, they are banging down low. And Paparo and Forte now blowing the whistle, and they'll check with the official timekeeper right now and with the scorekeeper. I believe they're checking the clock right now. Well, the 45-second shot clock is fresh. We know that. But what a game. You see the clock right now. Perhaps it's the overall time remaining, 12.24. Hopefully we'll soon find out the reason for the stoppage of play, but what a performance by Virginia. All the loose balls belong to them right now. They're doing a great job. They've neutralized and shut down the pressure defense. Now we watch Sheehy. What an excellent pass. He had great awareness, basketball savvy, court awareness where his teammate was. Now take another look. Now watch the pass. He's big. He sees him. An excellent look to Mel Kennedy, and Kennedy delivers. Or, I'm sorry, it was Andrew Kennedy. I don't know what the delay is. I'm trying to figure out. It's, they keep looking up at the scoreboard, and I know it's an eight-point differential, 12-24 on the clock. She is really hobbling right now. He's holding on to that, that left leg of his, the thigh. Dave Popson is still, well, he's now back in the game. He just entered for Dean Smith. He sat a few moments ago. It is the official time clock, not the 45-second clock. 12:24 seemingly is the problem here, and they're discussing it right now. Joe Forde talking with Terry Holland of Virginia. She, he's played an excellent second half. He's rebounded. He's defended down in the post. He's scored. He's played like the kid that came out of Bishop McQuaid with all the adjectives. He also visited UCLA, and some people thought he might have stayed in the East and went to uh, Boston College. Well, it's a shame that this is happening right now because the tempo of this game, the manner in which this game has been played has been so intense. And you wonder now how it will affect these two clubs, particularly Virginia. They are the team that have been on the uptick the last few moments. Well, maybe it's uh, a situation where they're getting a little rest right now. They don't rotate a lot of bodies on true, the floor. True, true. They only play seven people, so it can be a positive uh, as well as a negative. You can make, I think, when I say you, I mean the public, anything you want out of it. If North Carolina now were to break this open, people will say, well, see, that rest took away their momentum. Remember, it was an eight-point differential when this delay took place. 55-47. I'm going to write this down with 12. The clock was stuck. We were just informed at 12.09, and it went back to 12.25 for some reason. So there was a malfunction and a 16-second differential between the 12.25 shown and the actual time remaining, 12.09. So they've ironed that problem out. You're right. Virginia may have gotten a gimme. They're not as deep as North Carolina. Both clubs getting a free blow. Pops it back on the floor. They're playing awful. He's got to look to score a little bit, David. He scored yesterday. He's got to look to run a back screen. They do a great job screening North Carolina. Lebo. And the tight rim of the cap center. Finally, he rattled it through. They got to get Lebo some shots. He's too good a shooter not to be shooting the basketball. Put in a lot of that to the defense of Virginia, but Jeff's got to move a little better without the basketball. Now the Cavaliers with just over 11 minutes left in this game to wonder when they may start milking the clock in that half court game of theirs. Well, you don't want to get tentative now, Timmy. You want to play a normal game. They're running their half court game, looking for the high percentage shot. That's their style of play, though. They like the tempo in the half court game, although they have run at uh, certain times today. And the shot by Mel Kennedy forced up, and now Andrew Kennedy has four fouls. And 
with 11.08 to play. The Cavaliers lead it by six. Mel Kennedy's got that unorthodox looking shot. And there's the foul now by Kennedy going after the defensive rebound. That's his fourth over Scott Williams, number 42. Will Virginia hold on against second ranked North Carolina? The next 11 minutes and eight seconds, we'll find out. Gets good deep position, turns and hits the jumper. Hey, the beat goes on and on in Carolina. They lose a Doherty and a Martin, and they get a Reed, and then they get a Scott Williams. Next year, they lose Kenny Smith, and they get King Rice, an outstanding player from New York State. Sheehy still on fire for the Cavaliers. It's the what time. Second half. It's the time Sheehy show right now. He's showing inside, outside ability and post play. I mean, is he banging right now? All over on the defensive end. Oh. A double post move by Popson, and he just nailed Sheehy to the floor. He's a targeted man now by the Tar Heels. Bats on the glass, along with Williams, and the tie ball goes back to Virginia. What an effort right now by Virginia. Every kid is playing to their maximum. If you define coaching, to me, coaching is simply the ability to get the most out of each individual player. Terry Holland is getting maximum out of every player. Dean Smith knows that his team is in for a war. Knew it before the game, knew it now, and I believe the great confidence came to Virginia when they played them tough earlier this year. Williams hitting that look at the emotion. There. Look at the emotion. He yeah. loves it. Just prior to that, they ran a pick and just nailed Tom Sheehy. Dave Popson really gave it to him. Oh, that's the way you want to reverse it against him. You want to reverse it against that trap. Mel Kennedy after the air ball from Sheehy. Coming up with every loose ball. Finding the loose ball means you're playing aggressive basketball. Lead back to eight for the Cavaliers. Sheehy's hands are on his knees. I would get him out for about a minute. Just give him a break. Remember, Andrew Kennedy has four fouls. Lebo, Jeff Lebo now with 11 points. They're going to rotate into a trap. Kenny Smith gives the signal. He calls the signals for the defense, number 30. Lebo's got to shoot the ball more, Tim. He's got to be a little bit more active without the ball. Yeah, both, and really Wolf as well. He hasn't touched the ball in the last few sequences for the Carolina Tar Heels. They're really well drilled against that half-court trap. They reverse the ball. They got people in post position. Bats, they play off of him, shading Sheehy. See, this kid here is running the attack well. What a pass inside to Sheehy. Rejected, he goes back up again. He drew the foul from Carolina's JR. And again, that was created by the 3D man, Johnny Johnson, one of the most underrated point guards in the nation. Another guy that's totally underrated is the kid down in Vegas, Greg Wade. There's the little kickoff. Now watch Sheehy's second effort. He goes up first, is deflected. He goes up again. Now JR bangs him. Greg Wade really makes the running Rebels of Jerry Tarkanian's team go, and yet he gets no publicity. It all goes to guys like Freddie Banks and also to Armand Gilliam, but you have to have the point guard. The reason Virginia's playing well is because of Johnny Johnson. Here are two teams, Dick, though, that are destined for the NCAAs. They're both locked. Oh, really? Is many that a lock? Oh, you think it's a lock? Many people. Well, that's what yeah. everyone here has been saying, including you at times. Oh, it's and yet a lock. People, and yet people say the ACC tournament is meaningless. You couldn't convince either coach or their teams of that right now. Anytime you have a single elimination tournament, how's all the teams? It's exciting. Can't allow them to shoot that. Perimeter defense becomes important now. Carolina has attempted coming into this game. 383 three points. And Virginia only 123. Carolina's made 170. Eight and a half minutes left. The Cavaliers by four. Here comes the Carolina fans getting into it. See Johnson under control, trying to break the defenses down. Nice move. And the solo. Johnny Johnson, solid goal, doing it all, penetrating, makes the big play. He's making Kenny Smith look mortal today. Oh, yeah, Kenny Smith really has not played like an All-American. But he is an All-American. Yep. Lebo again for three. And Wolf there to collect the rebound. And the Tar Heels move right back out to three-point land as Kenny Smith looks for and gets the pick. 
Virginia always recovering, and there's the three-pointer again. And look at the emotion. Joe Wolf and the Carolina bench beginning to feel it. 62-59. Told you a little bit earlier, Timmy, that I thought the three-point shot could be the difference. And if the three-point play wasn't available or shot available, Carolina would be in deep trouble here this afternoon. The crossover pass, Johnson to Sheehy. Tom Sheehy playing one of his great games. And Lebo with the Snowbird. Count it. Oh, count it. Count it. Jeff Lebo sneaks ahead of the pack. That's one of the few times today that Virginia is caught sleeping and they do not rotate back with good defensive transition. Kennedy's going to come on the floor now. See, they run the ball right up. This is like the Celtics. Get it out quick. And there's Lebo now. Running it up. Now he'll just interfere. Sheehy knocks it. You can't go up through the bottom of that hoop. Now Andrew Kennedy coming in with four fouls. Terry Holland gambling perhaps in some people's minds, but maybe not. 7-18 is left. If you're going to win, it's winning time. And Andrew Kennedy has been the guy to get it down, down low today. They could have another foul on a lane on Sheehy. But they don't call it. Oh, there is contact. I, he just laid a body on Joe Wolf. Bodies by Nautilus in the semifinals of the ACC. Virginia by two. Underway, our championship week continues with the second semifinal, and it's still a, rend still a, a Cinderella time. <laughs> Wake Forest and NC State, and Dick, neither of these clubs expected to be in this position today. And now Valvano, with a victory here, could perhaps uh, have a case to make the NCAA tournament field, despite what might happen in the title game tomorrow. He's in great shape right now, Jimmy. I think with a win, he definitely locks up a bid. Dick Schultz and his committee have a tough time when they get down to the last six slots. Schultz, the AD at Virginia, is a bright mind. He's a former basketball coach, does an outstanding job, and is a bona fide leader. Seven minutes left. Cavaliers were up by eight three minutes ago, and Joe Wolf has really been out of sight. But then again, the Cavaliers always there to answer. Johnny Johnson putting it down. Johnny Johnson with the big shots. They isolate him. He takes the spin move one on one. Clutch player. Oh, an alley oop. Look at Dean. Look at Dean. He's he's living on that sideline. He is living. He's going after Paparo. He wants a little push off. He can't believe it. Look at him doing a dance. Yep, he really is. Oh, yeah. He bags him with a technical. Yeah, he just got it. Yes, sir. He earned the T. He earned the T. You got to credit Paparo. He, he's as animated as I've ever seen him on a sideline. Dick Paparo says, no, D. No, Michelangelo. Not with me, baby. Boom. For years and years. Look at him. That, Look at him. There's the reaction. And now comes the T. Now comes the T. And they debate this year in and year out as you see Johnson at the line. Many coaches in this league, Terry Holland, one of them, at times questioning how officials handle the maestro from Chapel Hill. They say he gets breaks during the course of a game because he's the Michelangelo and because he has that, that austere attitude oh, I don't on know the sideline. I don't know about getting breaks, but I think he has earned such a reputation that sometimes officials might think twice yep. because of who they're making a the call against. But they have earned it with a great tradition, their winning tradition. I don't say that. I don't think it's done deliberately. I think it's just a reputation many times, and officials might think twice because they know it's a Dean Smith basketball. Terry Holland's club has the lead after the timeout. We've had a bit of everything, including a rare technical on Dean Smith. Stay with us. There's a lot more to come. So much is going to be decided in the next 36 hours. Right now, the pom-poms from Blue Heaven abound as the Tar Heels trail Virginia by six. We understand in the Southeastern Conference Tournament that the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia, has clawed back. They were down by 20 at one time, and they've taken LSU into overtime. And John Saunders back in our studios will be keeping you abreast of that game as well as all others in college basketball a bit later. You know, uh, Dickie Paparo was the official a couple of years ago when Jim Beheim went bananas. He didn't call a technical on, uh, on Michael Graham in the Big East final, and, and, and Beheim went crazy in that game, but that's Dickie Paparo. Sheehy 
down on the baseline. He's 7 of 12 from the floor. It's picked out of bounds by Lebo and Reed. Unfortunate break there for the Tar Heels. That little story on Dick Paparo didn't come from me. It came from Don Marcus, an outstanding writer in the Baltimore area. I can't take credit for that at all. So I'm going to give him credit for that. I don't remember. My memory doesn't have that kind of retention. Nice pass inside to Andrew Kennedy. Sheehy fighting for it again. Look. Oh, what a play. Oh, they wave it off. Well, they took, say he took steps. Look, Terry Holland trying to calm Sheehy down. He's ready to have it. I'll tell you something. Tom Sheehy's playing a great, great game. You'd hate to see him blow with a technical and losing his cool. There's the jump shot. Now, you watch this action. Look at Sheehy. He's a madman inside. Look at him. He took a little step, though. He took a little step. Oh, oh is he fired up after seeing the call from Paul Alsman. He'd make a heck of a football tight end. Somebody ought to draft him as a tight end. Oh, might have got away with one there. Terry Holland's down. It's his turn to get up. See, now that's where maybe an official would have thought twice because of the presence of Dean Smith. Saying, well, maybe I'll let him get away with that one here. I don't know. You know, it's so tough to deal with the mind. I'm in a tough enough time trying to deal with what I'm thinking. <laughs> deal with me. <laughs> it's been a long year. It's a great game, though. It is. Man-to-man -man defense, really dig a five-second violation. Now, Kenny Smith for the first time with some pressure defense and a momentary lapse in concentration by Johnny Johnson. If the defensive team is putting pressure on a basketball, a player who's dribbling the ball has five seconds to make something happen. Get rid of the ball or shoot the ball. Out of five, it's a violation. Ooh, Morgan with the near steal. Morgan's doing a good job on Kenny Smith. And again, a foul, this time on Sheehy. Look at Dean, he's still going at it. He's letting them know you should have been calling it earlier. And he's still giving it to Paparo. Forte made this call. Look at Sheehy right now. He's bodying, he's bodying. They're bodying down inside. Leaning all over JR. JR trying to sit in that post. That's four now on Sheehy. Holland has to be concerned. Andrew Kennedy and Sheehy with four. Joe Wolf. Big inside basket by Joe Wolf. A clutch performer out of Kohler, Wisconsin. This is a war here. This is basketball at its best. NCAA style. Two teams that have New Orleans on their minds, particularly Carolina. Everyone picks them as a lock for the final four almost. That time, Johnson forced another one up, and Scott Williams brings it down. Kenny Smith controlling it. They got great balance. They're certainly not a lock this year in unpredictability. Oh, look at a contact in the post. Now, what oh, is this call? Double foul, and that really hurts Virginia because that's five on Sheehy. Now, you watch this contact inside. There's Sheehy working with Reed. He gets Reed for one and gets Sheehy. Oh. Sheehy's hobbling off the court. Oh. Big, big call there. I'll tell you one thing. If they want to blow the whistle now with the kind of contact that's been going on inside, they can blow it on every possession. Well, you've got to believe now with the intensity of the game, already a technical has been called. Dean Smith had been warned all game long, and now Sheehy is fouled out. But again, remember, what Smith was so upset about was the bodying up that Sheehy had done so often, and yet the call had not been made. Now Sheehy out of the game. The alternate possession after the uh, double foul goes to Carolina, right? They usually have a jump ball in the older days. Lebo and Reed keeping it alive. Brought down by Andrew Kennedy. Remember, he too in foul difficulty, playing with four here in the second half. Still Virginia clinging to a two-point lead. This possession becomes big. Sheehy's been their offensive firepower. He's now sitting on the sideline. Kennedy over Reed. See, right JR now, with the rebound. Right now, it's going to limit the rebounding power of Virginia. You got to give the edge to North Carolina now, definitely. I believe Carolina is going to put a spurt on it and, and get up in front. I think they're going to really miss Sheehy. That's how outstanding he was here in the second half. 16 points, eight rebounds. That's a lot of offense and defense. What a move by Lebo. See, I'll tell you one thing. If Tom Sheehy was on the floor right now, no way does Lee, no way does Lebo have the driving lane that he had there. The first tie in this game since we were deadlocked at a dozen with four minutes gone.
Virginia has controlled this game, and you wonder what may happen if Carolina ever gets a lead. They went to the zone. Virginia, not a good perimeter shooting team. Carolina rotated to the zone. Mel Kennedy, an offensive foul. I beg your pardon, a defensive foul. A block on Scott Williams, and Forte made a real quick call that time. Well, you like the officials to make a quick call. Timmy, you want him to call it with authority. Kennedy with the big basket, taking it right at. There he is now inside. He's going to take it right at Scott Williams. There's Mel Kennedy oh. hanging, twisting in the air. Close. Defense slides over. It's one of those close calls, but he made it. Yep. He believed in it, and he made it quickly. In the Southeastern Conference Tournament, we're told, the Tigers of Dale Brown and Hugh Durham's dogs are in a second OT. Oh, look at this contact right here. Now, here's where they get the double foul. They get one on JR, and they get one on Sheehy. Big miss at the line for Mel Kennedy. Remember, we keep talking about Carolina with the three-point shot. Virginia very rarely uses it. Kenny Smith's really been neutralized by Morgan and also Johnny Johnson. They shut down the Carolina vaunted running game, too. They're going right inside now. Great play by Kenny Smith to get it to the horse without Sheehy on the floor. 13 now for JR. His presence is really being missed, Tim. A double foul becomes a very big call at a crucial time in the game. Remember, it, it happened with four and a half minutes to play. And with Virginia leading. Johnny Johnson with the spin. The iron on kind, though, and now Carolina. Chance to go ahead. The lead. Oh, Jeff Lee. great head fake. Count it. Count it. I'd get a timeout right here, maybe, Terry. That's the first lead in the game with 2.25 left. And Holland will get the timeout. Good move by Terry Holland. One of the real bright minds in coaching. What a job he has done at Virginia. Many say they're the best team in the land. They'll have to prove it to Virginia in the last 220. Tim Brando and Dick Vitale back at the Cap Center. You see the story and a 10-2 run for Carolina since Sheehy's double foul and since the technical foul and there's Tom on the sidelines and coach you called it you're amazing how you come up with these ideas at critical times you were right on that job I don't know about you know being amazing or calling it you just can sense the way yeah. Sheehy was playing without his presence on the floor that they were going to be a little bit bats and he took steps so you go to Bats now, who's a freshman and has been outstanding in this game, but he does, does not possess the ACC experience of a Tom Sheehy, who was brilliant. You gotta give the kid credit. There's the little walk-in violation. You gotta give Sheehy credit. He gets a lot of heat. I thought he was superb this afternoon. Remember that double foul, and also remember the technical, because the technical was brought about because of all the body work done inside by Sheehy. That's what had Dean Smith living. And the three-point shot has really helped North Carolina. There's a steal by Bats. It's a four-on-three. Johnny Johnson will think better of the numbers game and bring it back up. What an improved player Johnny Johnson is. Drew Johnson, Kennedy. Johnson and Drew Kennedy. Good inside-outside game. Play well together. 134 is left. Now, who will have the ball last? It's going to come down to that. Remember when they played the last time in Chapel Hill? It was the last shot of one point game. Richard Morgan missed one. Could have won the game. Joe Wolf There's steps the three out pointer. Three. It rolls off. And now Virginia can reclaim the lead. Johnny Johnson under control. Just what a coach wants out of a point guard leadership ability. Handle the ball, get it to the right people, distribute it like Tommy Amica does at Duke. Virginia constantly looking to get the high percentage shot. Andrew Kennedy inside. Got to remember now with Sheehy out. That may be who they look for, Coach. And then Johnny Johnson just doing an excellent job handling the pressure. Well, here he is now, one-on-one, -on -one, trying to create an opportunity. Shot clock at eight. Drew Kennedy is fouled by Reed. Again, Johnny Johnson aware where his teammate is. Kennedy spots up to the open area. Johnson's up in the air, can't shoot the ball. Now, here it is. He can't shoot it. He's up in the air. 
Kennedy spits in his face, but he knows where Kennedy's. Hey, Kennedy wants the ball. Yep. To me, that's a sign of a, of a mature player when the game is coming down a stretch to want the rock late in the game, winning time. This guy wants it. Made two big free throws to send Bobby Clemens to Heartbreak Hotel yesterday. He won the game yesterday with three seconds to go against Georgia Tech. It's a big miss there, though. 38 seconds remaining. And the clock, not a factor. He missed them both, but Bats gets the rebound. That's with a big offensive oh. rebound. He earned his scholarship with that rebound. How often do you see that happen to North Carolina? Now to run it right down to the last. Oh, no! A bell for a back. Oh, what a turnover! What a turnover! And really very unfortunate because Johnson didn't see his own man. He ran right into him. The ball was loose and there was nothing left except to get it and then take the turnover that way. Good call by the official. A Carolina player did not touch the ball. 26 Carolina seconds are left. It's 72, 72. And the Tar Heels with possession. And Virginia's got a diagram of defense to handle the three-point play as well, well as the interior play because they can beat you either inside or outside even though the score is tied. Well, right now, basically, they're going to set up a play, I believe, to go down to the first inside option they have. Force you either to follow them with the size differential. I got to believe right now they're going to bang the ball home to the interior, run the clock down to about five seconds, get the ball down inside, try to shoot it with maybe three, but give a chance, give yourself a chance for an offensive rebound, but you don't want to give Virginia a chance for a shot with the score tied. It changes your whole complexion in designing your patterns with the score tied or whether you're down one or up two. The arrow pointing in the direction of Virginia in a tie ball situation. Carolina with three timeouts remaining, two for the Wahoos, and it's all come down to this. J.R. Reed is 63% free throw shooter, but a shot well here. They're opening up the court. They're in their open set offense. Remember, the defense does not have to come out any longer with that 25-second shot clock. They've changed that rule. They're isolating Kenny Smith for penetration and dump down. There it is. The dump down. Williams, it won't go. And with one second left, Virginia gets the timeout. Boy, they got the shot they wanted on the baseline. But it was an air ball from the freshman. Well, the freshman maybe got a little tight right there. He could have been the hero. He could have been a, the guy that's celebrating now in the locker room. Here's Kenny Smith at his best penetrating. Now, there it is, the dump down to the inside we talked about. And there's Scott Williams. Oh, he threw up an air ball, a little A-B. Scott, he's a good player. He's a great kid. There's the coach's reaction. Let's take a look right now. Look at the, look at, look at Terry Holland, the intensity. He looks like a perfect senator. I always call him Senator Holland. <laughs> well, he could do a lot for capital gains here in the Cap Center after today. It has just been an outstanding basketball game in every sense of the word. And many felt coming in that this would be the unofficial title game of the ACC tournament, considering how North Carolina blew past everyone in this league except Virginia. Well, you know, going down right now to the overtime situation, you know, it's going to be really difficult for Virginia to get a good shot where they have to take the ball out of bounds here at the baseline. In the NBA, you get a choice. You can get it at mid-court. Getting it at mid-court, they would have a shot because the time doesn't run until the ball's, ball's in the hands of an offensive player or touches a player on the floor. Overtime has to favor North Carolina with Sheehy oh, on yeah, the line. Absolutely, no doubt. And Drew Kennedy playing with 4-5. So they're going to put pressure on the ball being thrown in. You just don't want to foul here. Long pass intercepted by Reed. And you knew it had to happen sooner or later in the ACC tournament. It has happened in the semifinals. We're going to overtime.
I'm a, I'm fatigued. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. I had a three overtimer with Indiana. Wisconsin was a great game because Wisconsin was oh, yeah. overachieving. Virginia, to me, is a legitimate top 20 yeah. team in America. They, they got great balance. They got five scorers and double figures for the season. They play excellent team defense. And Terry Holland's club has intelligence and discipline. But right now, they do not have Tom Sheehy. It's been a Big Ten kind of game, too, now that you mentioned the Indiana-Wisconsin game, because it's not been the finesse ACC today. No, it hasn't. These officials have allowed a lot of contact inside. Technical against Dean Smith, then a double foul against J.R. Reed and Tom Sheehy that ultimately got Sheehy out of the game, who was the target of Dean Smith's technical. Very emotional contest. Drew Kennedy with the bank. And it's open late. That's so impressed the way the Virginia kids used to head fake. You can see their coaching staff has really worked on how to play down in the post because they give up a lot of size. 74-72. Right now, JR's got to go down in the boxes. They don't have the size inside to play number 34 inside. Lee ball from the lead. That shot was falling earlier in the second half. He's gone cold the last three times from the perimeter. See how he backed it up? Nobody was back. Come to the glass. Nobody rebounding. Good point. Oh, Lee ball with the steal. And the foul against Morgan. He had to give that one up. It's a two-shot foul, and Lebo will throw the line. Richard Morgan going for the ball, cracks him on the arm. I watch the anticipation of Lebo. He steps in the passing lane. Doesn't have super quickness that pushes the ball out in front. That's called the speed dribble. And there's the foul by Morgan. Rather than give him the easy layup. Make sure he doesn't score. There it is, Jeff Lebo, Carlisle, Jim Thorpe country. There is the bang on the arm. Play for his daddy. His daddy was his coach in high school, and his dad is coaching right now in the state tournament. He scored 41 points against DeMatha High School in a game while a junior. Boy, he caught a lot of attention after that game. You see his numbers there. By the way, that's the first time in this game I can recall that Johnny Johnson picking up his dribble and being caught with a turnover. Johnny Johnson's been so solid in that backcourt. This guy's an excellent free throw shooter. He puts a clinic on for you young kids out there. Excellent rotation, concentration, good backspin. Just over a minute gone in the first overtime. We're tied at 74. There's the run and jump where they leave a man, then they rotate. There's the kiss, and it pays off. They usually convert after a turnover. There's another foul. They got Morgan again. And when you get a foul against Lebo, that's the wrong man. That's what Morgan has done for a second time here in overtime. Now here's the call. There's the run and jump. Scott Williams comes over. Now you got to post somebody to the middle. He throws it up in the air. Tries the diagonal pass. Here's the steal. Here's the foul. This guy's a great free throw shooter, a la Steve Alford down in Indiana. They pop some re enters. J.R. Reed. You know, something similar. Got? Alford and uh, Lebo, both their dads are high school coaches. Sam Alford down in uh, Newcastle coached his son, Steven. You can always tell with the fundamentals of the free throw line when you're the son of a high school coach. Look at his eyes. His eyes tell a story, too. Comes up with a brick right there after we jinx him, <laughs> which always happens. You're never perfect. Even you have uh, missed a few. I, oh. I remember seeing a couple of them, courtesy John Wildhack, in the truck in the Big Ten. Here it is, big possession right now. Wide open 16-footer, Mel Kennedy. And now Virginia, back up by two. They continue to answer every Carolina challenge, and Mel Kennedy now has a dozen in this game. They're playing man-to-man. -man. Kennedy playing Joe Wolf again, giving up a lot of size. 6'5 against 6'10. Down on the bench, baseline. Williams rejected by Bats. Hey, Bats is going to be a player at Virginia. They got themselves an outstanding one. He was rated in most of the services about the 60th to the 65th best high school player coming out of St. Joe's out of Pennsylvania, out of Ohio. Old player of the year in the Cleveland area his senior year. Virginia gets great shots out of their offense. They really drill in perfect spacing. Look at the shots they get out of their offense. Andrew Kennedy. That's high percentage shooting. And this team doesn't want to be denied. They're saying, forget about it. With Tom Sheehy, with that one, we're going to get the W down in Charlottesville. Carolina not invincible. A year of unpredictability. Certainly my team to win it. Oh, the give and go was worked well into 
Kenny Smith. They pick up the foul from Bill Bass. I think the biggest asset today has been two factors. One, the ability of Virginia to take away the running game. This is a little give and go, the oldest play in basketball. I give it and I go. I cut without it. See, the defense has a tendency to have a mental lapse when a player cuts without the ball. And the second factor, one, their defensive transition, and the second factor, I think Virginia's done an excellent job with its post defense down along the baseline. And again, that gets back to teaching and coaching. You saw Bill Batch there moments ago. Those numbers on Kenny Smith have a lot to do with Virginia's success today. Batch sat out some of the season back in January with academic problems. It's paid off well, though. He's come back and is concentrating both on the court and off the court. He's a quick athlete. Hey, Carolina not helping themselves. Oh. There's the big fella with a big offensive rebound. They had to have that one, and it's a two-point game again. Size and power take over inside. Big, strong J.R. Reed, but their guards, Nebo and Kenny Smith, come out empty on that free throw line. And that's usually a rarity oh. in North Carolina. All of the numbers, when you see single digits, points and assists even for Kenny Smith in the game, that's uh, unusual. Start out in a stack ball offense, and now they get a little movement, cut away from the ball. Motion is the toughest thing to defend. When you have motion, defensive players usually break down after about the third or fourth pass and cut it. Look at that move to oh, the ball. Johnson, high off the glass. Reed pulls it down, gives an elbow to Scott Williams in so doing. Two freshmen on the floor. J.R. Reed and Scott Williams, but certainly not normal freshmen. And another foul away from the ball. Oh, I should say a whistle stopping play with Bats injured. A little blood, I think, coming from the nostril. He got a shot in the nose, and uh, Paul Hausman quickly called time. Earlier in the year, they were playing John Disselin, a 6'11 player, and then they had another guy about 6'11, Tim Martin, and they decided to go to a quicker lineup. 78, 76 hour score, 123 left in OT. Tim Brando and Dick Vitale back again with you at the Cap Center. There you see the field goal shooting in overtime. Virginia really warming up, and Mel Kennedy and Drew Kennedy have a lot to do with that. And look at Carolina at the line, missing three here in the overtime. Two for five, 40%. Not really typical of Carolina. Always rank in the top five in American field goal percentage and free throw percentage. Virginia has two timeouts left. North Carolina with four. Remember this, in an overtime period, you get one extra overtime. Right. They were down to three in regulation. The Tar Heels and Virginia down to one. And there's a turnover. Again, down in that paint area where there were so many earlier in the game. They cut off J.R. Reed's angle in driving to the basket. He tried to get it to an open teammate, and they forced a turnover. Right now, Carolina will get the ball back. But this possession's big. If they can go up four here, make life really miserable for Dean Smith and his people. They're using that clock. On a 20-second differential between the shot clock and the game clock that you see in the lower right-hand portion of your screen. This possession could mean the W for Virginia with a score here. They're down to nine on the shot clock. Go up four, makes it difficult with one possession to get Johnson. And it doesn't go down. 18 seconds left now. Do you defend for three? Dean normally does not call the timeout. He allows them to play. Kenny Smith, he pumps. Down low, bats, batting everyone away, and the tie ball is called, and Carolina gets possession. It. Carolina, oh. this is one of the reasons why I don't like this rule. Here's a kid makes a great effort, now penalized Virginia by the fact of a jump ball situation. Alternate possession going over to North Carolina. I'd rather take my shot with the official throwing the ball up in the air. There's Kenny Smith. Now here comes the rebound. Look at Bats. He wants the win. He goes after the ball. And now there's the there's the tie-up. Jump ball. Ball by. Oh, now see. Look. Really reacting. And there's Dean Smith now. Carolina getting a break. But let me just point this out about the jump ball situation. Right now, here's a great effort. And a game could be possibly lost because of a little bit of luck that the alternate possession goes one way as we look at the reaction of the coaches. See, the reason that rule was put in, a lot of people were complaining. People were complaining about the way the officials were throwing the ball up, that there was no consistency. Right. I, I like that because I'll tell you one thing. Throwing the ball up 
you have to now teach your players how to play on a jump ball situation, and I think it eliminates a special part of the game. I'm not convinced that I like the alternate possessions. And the North Carolina Tar Heels come out. Now, do you defend for three? How do you do that in well, Virginia? If you're North Carolina, you're going to take the, the best shot you can get out of your offense. And whether it's a three-point play, if Lebo or the Wolf can shoot the three-pointer, you take it. If not, you get the good second. You get the two-point play. Oh, what a... Oh, Andrew Kennedy. Andrew oh. Kennedy knocked it off Rangino Smith. Virginia gets it. And Dickie Paparo with the quick call with authority right on that sideline. Doesn't waste any time. Right in front of the Carolina bench. There's a lot of pressure. Look at him active on that baseline. Now here comes the ball. He bangs it off him. Looks at Paparo. There's Dickey pointing. Look at him. Yeah. Yeah, tell him, Dick. Tell him. Look at Holland. <laughs> he smells it. He said, hey, we're due this one because we lost the heartbreaker overtime game by one. Now the Kennedys, that's a popular name in the D.C. area, but the, a new family of Kennedys making the noise in the headlines here today. Both Mel and Drew Kennedy that time with good defense off the inbounds play, and they lined up in a man-to-man -man that time. Well, they've been playing man-to-man -man exclusively the entire game. Virginia is a man-to-man -man team defensively, and no need to change yep. now late in the game. They've done an excellent job job with their man-to-man -man, and I think the key has been they have shut down Kenny Smith in the open court they have really taken away North Carolina's open court game and again this proves one thing that the college basketball experts again don't know what they're yeah. talking about the Vitals the Packers the McGuire's because I'm telling you right now it's so unpredictable with the parity that exists in America look at Paparo uh, perhaps another timeout being called by Dean Smith. There was one. He's down to two. Virginia still with uh, its two timeouts remaining. I beg your pardon, one timeout remaining. Uh, seven seconds left. What is Carolina going to do defensively? Uh, what do they do against Virginia? They know they have to get the ball back. Let me talk a little bit about some strategy here. If you're North Carolina, one, you're going to try option one to get the five-second violation. Remember, the ball has to be entered and touch a, a Virginia player's hands before the count of five. Yeah. That's option A. Option B, you go for the steal. You try to make the quick steal and then get the conversion and the score. Option three, if you do not get the steal, you have to foul immediately. Now you hope that maybe he converts one of the one-on-one -on -one yeah. and not both to give you a shot with the three-point shot to be able to tie the game and go to OT again. You're hoping and praying he's going to miss both. Or miss the one front end of the one on one, rather. But if he doesn't, it makes one out of the two. You still got a shot with a three point shot for a tie. Yesterday, in a similar situation, Terry Holland threw up an automatic foul. They designated someone to foul before the ball was inbound. Now, a timeout call with the near five second call coming up. Drew Kennedy took it, and that means Virginia is out of timeouts they have no more and now just getting the ball inbounds becomes a key factor remember this in a tie ball game virginia called a timeout against clemson with the ball and the game tied and it was their exceeded the timeout limit right. and they lost the game because a technical is called in that situation was a heartbreaking loss to clemson michael brown went to the line and uh, gave uh, cliff ellis another big win at home right now remember the key here is with five seconds the player has not to release it from his hand the ball well to release it from his hand that can be a violation on the sideline he's yeah. got to get it out before the count of five but the ball must touch a player on the floor by the count of five the, uh, the baseline at times can be run, and at what? times it can't, and you've got to recognize that if you're inbounding the oh, ball. Oh, yeah, your coach has to point that out. Right now, he cannot run the baseline when the official hands hands him the ball because it's after a violation, not after a score. After a score, you can run the baseline. Richard Morgan goes in to end. Remember, it Kenny Smith wins it. And a timeout called with six seconds left. Only one second went off Well, the that's clock. all supposed to. The clock does not start running until the ball is touched. So Kenny Smith outruns Johnny Johnson for the ball and just one second off the clock. 
Remember this, the ball must touch a player on the court before the count of five. Whereas in the NBA, as you see the play right here, that's the quick timeout. Yep. In the NBA, the ball is thrown in bounds. The clock doesn't start as long as he catches the ball prior to the count of five. So Dean Smith, once again, orchestrates a defense that can give him the ball back. And Terry Holland had to think that was the longest one second in Look the history Terry. of college basketball. Terry can't believe it. Again, North the shortest one second in the history of college North basketball. North Carolina, known for pulling out miracles, does an excellent job in defending the entry of the ball. Yep. Virginia doesn't do a good job in getting the ball in play. I remember a game last year when John Williams, now playing with the Bullets of Washington, threw the ball from one end of the court to the other, and then Georgia got the ball inbounded and uh, won the game that time. So that's something you have to recognize. Six seconds left. See, there is a difference in inbounding the ball in the NBA in a college game with the five-second clock. Lebo stripped, and the shot oh, by Williams. Oh, Williams, he misses a shot to win it at a regulation time, but now ties it in overtime. Oh, what a, what what a, a dramatic shot. And a break, too, because Johnson knocked the ball away, stripped, in essence, Kenny Smith. The ball wound up with the freshman, and he buried the baseline jumper, and we're going for a double dip of overtime here at the ACC tournament. North Carolina with another miracle story in the chapter of Dean Smith basketball. The clock is winding down. Jeff Lebo pushing it up the floor. Johnson with the tough D. He now deflects it. It's at two. And now it's at one. The little jump hook. NBA, nothing but net. Scott Williams with a big hoop. There's a look at Dean. He says, just the way I designed it. I designed that play. I'm the Michelangelo coaching. <laughs> oh, look at him. Look at him. He wanted to foul yeah. first. He wanted to foul. Look at Terry Howland. <laughs> Come on, I'm calm as can be. He's been through this before. He's had his share of big games against North Carolina. I can't recall a game as intense between these two schools in a tournament since the Samson Jordan era. Right. This is really that kind of intensity. Well, they're playing with a great deal of intensity. I've got one problem with this tournament. It needs to go four days. <laughs> Three days is not enough. Only one blowout in this tournament. North Carolina's win over Maryland. Since then, it's just been cardiac city here at Washington's Cap Center. Out of bounds. Last touch by Bats. Remember, Andrew Kennedy still playing with four fouls. Sheehy's been on the bench since four minutes left in the regulation. There's Reed posted up inside. Oh, look at that contact. And now Joe Wolf right out of the deck. Timeouts in the second overtime period. North Carolina with two. Virginia with one. And Wolf shot won't fall. Morgan with the rebound. See, they're cutting off his driving angle. They're not allowing him to spin, which he likes to do, into the middle of the floor. And he's smart enough to give it to an open teammate, but they're coming up short. Wolf did there. The old Bats has had his share of... Excellent play down low. A near steal by J.R. Reed. Mel Kennedy feeding Drew Kennedy, and he loses it to Williams. Williams getting a lot of PT playing time, and a two freshmen on the boxes. And Williams in. Reed. Lebo finds Wolf. And the shooters touch on the tight rims at the cap center. It won't fall, but Wolf gave the iron a great go. It hit every side of the rim. North Carolina's depth also coming to play now as we move into the second overtime. Morgan wide open. Richard Morgan with the wide open 16-footer. Good scorer. Good shooting ability. I like his stroke. He can really stroke it. Only a south out of Salem, Virginia. Playing off. See, Morgan's playing Smith a lot. He's got a lot of size on Kenny. Near steal by Morgan. 
Nice recovery by Kenny Smith. Kenny Smith is an open court player. Virginia's done a great job neutralizing the open court ability of Kenny Smith. Boy, the arms are waving, making an entry pass so difficult. That time Johnson got a hand on it before Wolf buried it. 80 to 80 with under three minutes left in the second overtime. Joe Wolf with 27 points. Carolina always with that one extra pass. That's why they have the high percentage. David Thompson's been out a great deal, and Scott Williams has played a lot of minutes, a lot of QT, quality time out of Scott Williams. Here's Kenny Williams studying the ball. Kenny Smith, rather. Concentrating on that ball. Kenny Smith getting down in his defensive stance against Johnny Johnson. Johnson plays a little bit like Otho Wilson when Wilson was here at Virginia under control. That senior year of his was the surprise 84 Final Four team. Morgan again. J.R. Reed battling with Kennedy, and Williams clears it to Kenny Smith. Good inside position. You mentioned 84. They lost in overtime to the by slam of Jammas from Houston. They beat Bob Knight's Indiana team that had just beaten North Carolina's club that was considered a favorite for the Final Four that year. Smith off the dribble. Scott Williams again. Scott Williams becoming a man inside. Scott Williams, what a future he has. Reed and Williams, what a tandem inside. That's the first overtime lead for Carolina. 82-80, a minute 40 left. That was the year Georgetown in 84 won it all at the see it. Battle Kingdom where they embarrassed Kentucky in that game, just embarrassed them in the semifinal. Outside, Johnson shot won't fall. Virginia beginning to look a bit fatigued now. I don't know about fatigue. I thought that was a little bit out of his range, Timmy. I really do. I thought it was a little bit out of his range. Well, now they go down inside low. Take advantage of your size. There he is. Wants to spin in the lane. Oh, oh a steal what a foul. By Morgan. Got away with one. Johnny Johnson looking for help. He's inside the lane area. Finally recovers to Mel Kennedy, and there are 52 seconds left. And a 15 second differential between the shot clock and the game clock in the lower right hand portion of your screen. You got to credit Virginia. I thought Virginia was going to be put away without Sheehy on the floor, losing all that size. Scott Williams and Andrew Kennedy, and Williams gets called by Joe Forte. Well, in a couple years, he won't call it against Williams, so let the freshman get away with it. Right now, he's got to give the advantage to the senior. What a performance, though, and a nice hand from the crowd as Scott Williams leaves the game with his fifth foul. Eight points and nine rebounds in the game. There's Kenny Smith right now with the jump shot, not having a good day offensively. There's Scott Williams. He attacks, finds the open lane. Let me clarify for the people there. In the NBA versus college on that five-second play from throwing a ball in bounds. In the NBA, when you throw the ball in bounds, you have until the time that the player catches the ball, the five-second situation. In college basketball, when you throw the ball in, Timmy, from the baseline, when you throw the ball in, it has to be out of your hands and caught by a teammate prior to the count of five. In the NBA, as long as you release it from the baseline before the count of five. Oh, with ice water in his veins, Andrew Kennedy hits both. Well, he had at 82, and again, we're coming down to a last shot for North Carolina. That's nothing new with Kennedy. He did it yesterday to beat Georgia Tech with three seconds to go. Made them both count. Now we're, they're going to look again for the penetration out of Kenny Smith. Dave Popson, J.R. Reed. Popson entered the game when Williams left. There's the penetration. He's going to try to create an opportunity out of the oh, open court. And did he ever is. get it? He said, there it is. I'm going to win it myself. In the open court, he's unstoppable. And it's high five. Dancing time. Chapel Hill. One second is left. But I believe Terry Holland may get a couple of extra seconds. We'll find out when we return. Terry Holland lobbying for extra seconds did not get them. They'll have to go the length of the floor all the way to Drew Kennedy. Last touch by whom? No, Carolina gets the ball back down on the other end if it didn't touch anyone. No one. Well, someone did. It was Drew Kennedy that touched it, so Carolina has it underneath their own hoop. 
And a timeout called by Dean Smith. He has one remaining. But I, I question that a bit, Dick. I felt that there were at least three seconds remaining when the shot by Smith went down, and it appeared that Johnny Johnson had gotten the timeout in time. They did talk with the official timekeeper, though. The officials did while we were away with John Saunders. You and I are going to really put the boxing gloves on because I disagree with you again. I thought yeah. they, yeah, I really do, Tim. I think when he released the ball, it might have just been at the two and was just coming down a fraction. There's a perfect example. They say there's one second left, even though the ball was touched. Uh, it was disappointment, but they played so hard. Boy, did they ever. Means a lot to a lot of people in well, the ACC. Yes, beating Carolina, you know, is, is a great moment for that to happen. And they played their guts out. They played their heart out. But, you know, also, remember right there, there was one second when he threw the ball in bounds. Even right. though it was touched, it could have been one and a half yeah. seconds. True. So that's why there's still one second yeah. left. If that ball did not touch anyone, no Carolina would get it down on the other yeah. end. It's all right to disagree after oh, about sure. five games in, in about a week. <laughs> and there it is, North Carolina, still the class of the ACC, proving it again to Terry Holland's club. They played North Carolina as well as a team in this league could ever play them, and they come up empty by two, even with the excellent play of the Kennedy men from Virginia.